Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. Thank you for visiting my garden this time. I want to show to you what are the plants and uh, wines that is growing by the friends side. <clears throat> Over here, if you can notice this particular plant, this uh, chalice wine, uh, particularly Solendra grandiflora. There's actually two types actually which I've come across. This particular one do not have uh, uh, fragrance. But if you were to come for the you know, Solandra Maxiflora, that particular one has a chocolatey fragrance and it's actually look more grander than this. But anyway, I just want to show that this 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 particular one is quite common and it's quite hardy. It takes about a few years for it to actually grow, so have to be patient for it to fully mature and grow quite a big. And once it start to bloom, it is quite a glorious sight actually, very much like the uh, lily kind of thing. And the bloom actually lasts for three three weeks or so. Continuing with the uh, other wines and plants, you can see the maiden jealousy here growing fairly wild and uh, very healthy looking. Now you can see the Grand Duke of Tuscany. This is uh, one of the rare blooming. Uh, jasmine flower it is just bloomed to me quite some started now uh i think it's because of the rain and the sun and uh, it is quite a rose looking kind of uh, a jasmine quite fragrant and it's very very beautiful as you can see uh, uh i i truly enjoyed it uh one of the things you can say here is that this that this particular one is a spent flower and if this flower can only last about a week or so uh, highly sought after and uh, I would readily recommend if you favor jasmine this is one of the things that it can actually uh, keep and grow uh, they do not uh, bloom very often but when they do they truly a remarkable majestic uh, flower uh, another jasmine that I, I want to introduce to you is uh, this particular one uh, is also known as uh, snowflake uh, you can see shortly the video will be coming in. Uh, one of the things here about this particular one here is that it has been mistaken for Thai jasmine, uh, but it's actually not. Uh, the beauty about this particular jasmine here is that it has a very crown kind of uh, uh, flowers and there is a yellow dot in the center. Uh, I believe that's why it's known as snowflake. It does not have fragrance, but it's a heavy bloomer. Now one of the good things about this particular one here is that you can actually have the flower do last more than a day and it's pretty looking plant. Uh, other than that, uh, it's it's quite a beautiful flower to actually uh, cultivate. This one is a flame lily, known as an upside down lily also. Uh, one of the things about this particular one here is that uh, Though it's very beautiful, the only way you can actually grow it is through the tuber. Because I've tried every other way, it doesn't really seem to work. They do form seeds, but uh, it's quite a challenge to grow them using seed. Another thing about this you have to be very careful about is that they are considered a poisonous plant. And every part of the flower and uh, plant and the leaf are toxic. So it's be good that uh, to keep away from children or... Animals that love to chew or eat upon this, especially pets. But other than that, if you enjoy the uh, uniqueness of the upside-down flower and, and the beauty of this uh, wine plant, this particular one is quite a remarkable plant to actually grow and cultivate. As you can see, the flowers, they, they do turn deep red as they mature and uh, the, the juvenile and the young ones have the yellow stem and uh, quite quite good the seed pod does not actually form uh, I, I believe I guess is because of the pollinators but other than that uh, they are a constant blooming plant another plant that I want to uh, show to you here is this bloodberry uh, I'm actually growing it for ornamental purposes. It is also said that it's uh, one of the invasive species around, but so far I find that uh, 
they are quite controlled here. And uh, the beauty about it is this berry seems to be very beautiful looking, quite an aesthetic look that I, I like this, this uh, berries kind of effect in my garden. This particular one is Maranta. Uh, it is something like the Kalante family, uh, but this, this particular one is quite robust and, uh, and I would say very uh, hardy. Unlike other Kalantia species, they tend to die away. This particular one is quite robust. They do form edible tubers. Uh, this particular one is a variegated species. There is another one which is totally green, which is be more cultivated for crop purposes. Over here you can see the Costa species, Woodsoni. Uh, one, one of the things that I, I like about them is that the humming, the sunbirds will come here to drink the nectar. Below here is the uh, collection of the blood berries and the, in the bud stage. The flower you can see it's actually white and eventually it'll turn red, uh, red uh, seeds. Here's my collection of Apicias, the one that is what I'm left with. I think I had a last a horrible attack with ants farming upon them with scale insect, followed by the infestation of rats that come and bite off the leaf stalks. And, and it was a horrible massacre that I lost quite a quite a species on this but these are the one that I managed to save and cultivate uh, it has now just slowly coming out of shock but uh, I hope I hope that they they pick up because uh, the, if not I'm, I'm not going to pursue seeking for this plant and cultivating because they, they, they are quite a sensitive plant and they do really require a lot of care they're known as flame, flame violets because of these beautiful red flowers uh, and it's quite quite a beauty actually. Over here you can see that I actually grow uh, sweet potato wine followed with some tradescatia and uh, this is piper bitter leaf and some uh, car curry leaf plant. This is just a site of what I plant. This is a trailing Rex begonia. It's actually a Sicus family. Uh, you can see the underside it has a deep magenta uh, burgundy underside leaf. It's actually a climbing plant and actually it trails above uh, the other plants. It, it has a very beautiful iridescent uh, coloration on it. And actually it has, it has a lot to do with the sun. Uh, it won't do very well in the shade. And what I've noticed, the colors do really come up when they are actually exposed to bright, bright sunlight. As you can see, the, the red vein and the coloration on, on, on top of it, uh, they are quite hardy in comparison to most plants. Normally what I'll do is I, I, I do trim and propagate them as many as possible just to keep that uh, some uh, space in my garden. Also the, the reality of it here is that uh, you must always know where's the top and the bottom because it can be confusing. So normally I, I look at this corner here when you can see something tiny like that I will consider that as my top. And these are the the uh, whining thing that is actually climbs something similar to curtain wine but this particular tendrils tend to spring up and coil over other plants uh, they are quite hardy actually uh, may they may look fragile but once they pick up the growth uh, they really uh, handle very well you can see the young bud leaf and uh, be quite in a magenta kind of colorization. If, if you love colors and variegated plants, I would really recommend you to cultivate this particular one. They are actually quite hardy. They do have uh, mealy bug infestation time to time, so you may have to watch out for it. But other than that, uh, once they really pick up, 
the the action goes strong you won't believe it actually all of this is actually coming from one main stem it, all, all of this whole plant is actually growing from one plant and so that there is a slight danger there that if the mother plant dies the whole plant actually dies and they don't have aerial roots where it's something like a colonization something similar like what pothos does or monstera where they have side roots coming aerial roots coming up from there this particular one do not have such effect there are some seekers uh, species that have aerial roots that comes out and stabilizes them but this particular one do not have aerial roots so you may have to be cautious about having some spares because uh, once the plant goes off or it goes into shock or some attack and, and the whole wine can uh, rot away and die and it will be sort of too late to cultivate it. Here you can see the matured ones. You don't really see the red ones on the surface but the under underside has a very strong deep magenta look. Uh, of course uh, the reality about this particular plant they have many shades and tones at all depending on how the colors if you can see that they, they do grow quite wildly and uh, see like over here the colors are more vibrant and so and, and you know, notice the green and and the silver uh, sheen that comes from be, behind it uh, one of the things about this particular one here is that not to take it for granted because they can actually suddenly die so i would really recommend if you can uh, cult if you cultivate this do have spares at least two or three pots of it just continue to trim all this uh, side nodes and branch at least three to four nodes will actually be good enough for them to grow over here is the other side of my fence where i have my succulent collection is hanging uh, on the hanging basket uh, hanging pots uh, this is a mother of millions and a few other types that I would have managed to exchange with my friends and in some collection of that. They are quite hardy. They are able to handle the weather where it's over. When it, when it rains, it's quite heavy and strong. Uh, this is my favorite donkey's tail. And this is another one. Uh, if you can notice, it's something like a Medusa hair kind of thing. Uh, the, other, the the reality about here is that they do tend to rot but as I said uh, the, the best part about it is always to have spares. I actually cultivate this with one single plant and with that I managed to grow as many as possible here. You can see there are some of uh, ice plant and some other succulents that actually grow. Uh, basically is that I've been keeping them for years. Uh, Also, this, this particular one is actually an invasive plant. It just came in from the fertilizer that I use. Uh, also, you can see, notice my rosemary has grown quite wild and big. Uh, th this particular pilia is baby tears. Uh, also, if you can see, the trailing Rex begonia has actually taken up a quite, quite an invasive look over here, which Actually, I don't mind. I really want this place to really look for. All the spots are actually hanged against the fence between my neighbor. I'm actually taking a picture from my neighbor's uh, wall. So the sun is actually shining, shining from this corner here. And the reality is that all the plants is actually facing off from this fence. Uh, all the coleus, these are the spare ones that I actually have outside. I just... Uh, planted the spares here, Indian borage. Also, you can see some dumb canes are actually forming their leaves out of the fence and uh, coming out over here, this portion. More trailing uh, Rex begonia. You can see this particular Calisia uh, here. I actually thought that this was actually a Tridiscantia species, but actually it's not. Uh, this is quite a beauty actually. Also begonia, which actually is quite in a, not in a good shape actually. Uh, I just left it as it is. I didn't want to disturb. Uh, more formation of the dumb cane. The fan back here, if you can notice them. 
they are they are more visible from the other side where from my house but just want to show how it looks like from this side of the fence also jewel of oppa uh, it is actually known as jinxing java uh, i i just poke over here to give them a good coloration also oxalis i have two types the green and the purple bloodberry they are actually now in flowering stage uh, quite a beauty when they actually form fruits the berries actually over here you can see the flower of the uh, jewel jewel of opa uh, they normally bloom only in the evening and they form seeds these are the, actually the seed pods and they, that i think that's why they are more understood as the jewel kind of thing and uh, i have two types of uh, pilia here baby tears and silver sparkles or red vein uh, one of the thing about this year is that once they pick up in the propagation kind of thing they really fill up the whole pot quite quite a beauty actually so this is my overall of my gate from the other side from my neighbor my neighbor has actually drove off his car off from the from the gate and left the place open and uh, uh, you can see in clear view of, of how thick and full my garden is against the fence and this side is maiden jealousy uh, and a collection of all that that i have shown earlier so you can see it's in, in this view and how is it actually forming on the top of it is the duke of the tuscany the rose jasmine of course the there's another particular plant you can see in the heart shape thing is known as a cow slip plant uh, it's a wine actually and uh, it's actually cultivated for the flowers where you can actually use the flowers to beat up with eggs and fry together in as uh, with an omelette kind of thing but i don't really get much of the flowers so i'm just keeping it as uh, and just growing it as when i can they do have a very strong nice fragrance towards the evening towards night over here you can see the flame uh, lily the upside down lily uh, earlier that i spoken of overall uh, this particular place here is a bit challenging where the wine and the plants tend to grow and overwhelm each other and i have to constantly prune prune and trim and keep this place tidy apart from that uh, you can see my car over here which I actually parked to uh, this is the where, where i actually parked my car and so uh, Garden is part and parcel of my life and maximize as much as possible. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for bearing with me my time here. I hope you really enjoy my garden and my Enmador handling my garden plants. I, I hope that you like able to click like and subscribe my video and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Have a nice, wonderful day.